Hello and welcome to today's script case video. Today we will be taking a look at an existing project which uses the Distance Matrix Google API to calculate the distance of two locations as well as the cost of travel. And usually I would recreate those applications and basically create the same project again. But today we will do something different. Instead, we are going to download the original project from the existing YouTube video, import it into our version of Scriptcase, where we can then review the existing code, add our own API keys, customize the applications, and then copy them into our own project ready for us to reuse, which is one of the best features of Scriptcase, reusability. So let's make a start by checking out the original applications and then quickly view the YouTube video and start to import it into our own version of Scriptcase. So we have here, first of all, the original application. So it starts with a menu where we have our new shipping. And here we can basically add a location. So for instance, I can add uh, an address London, England, say to Manchester, England. I can add that. And then this then provides you with a distance the duration of the travel, and if we add a price per kilometer, we will then also have a cost. Okay, so the price per kilometer is then added here. So we can add here, say one, for instance. I can add that. Come back again to the new shipping. So add the same addresses again, add them. We will now also have the cost. Now the original also includes the map here, which has an error, which we're going to solve this error. And then it will also be ready for use with your own API keys. And this will then also be discussed during that. So the video is based on this YouTube video, which we have within uh, YouTube. So it's the original video is in Spanish and we can actually download the files from here. So if you understand Spanish, it's worth watching. Otherwise, do have a quick peek in it. You'll get some idea of what's actually going on. Uh, otherwise, of course, there is also an English version elsewhere. But this being the original, this is what I'm going to go ahead and use. So then opening the Google Drive link, I can access here the files. Now, the original file here is the Drive download. Now, this includes the Maps INT, which is the backup file we want to actually use and download as well as then integrate into our projects. And here we then also have the uh, MySQL database that was used for the project. There is a readme file here. We're just going to skip that. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and download the single file. And then the backup file will then be downloaded. Now I could select the two of them and download the two files but then they will both be compressed into one application, into one compressed zip file. And then I still need to go through the decompression process and only then will I be able to import this project. Okay, so another thing we will be needing for this project will be the Google Maps Platform Distance Matrix API, which is then used within this project. So here we have the Distance Matrix API, which is a service which provides us with travel distance and time, which is what we're going to use. And here we have the URLs which are required, as well as all the parameters which are possible for and used throughout the application. So having a good look at this will help you throughout the uh, project and will also help you integrate it into your own project as well as apply further customizations within the code. Now, the other APIs we're going to have a look at as well which we have here, we have for this project at the moment, four APIs in use, and we will have to have a look at the applications which we have there. So viewing here within my Google Cloud, we have here the Directions API, the Distance Matrix API, the Geocoding API, the Geolocation API, as well as then the Maps JavaScript API. So you will have to add uh, your own API keys. Okay, so starting with script case, we would basically have our applications where we have, and we can start up here with project and import project. Okay, so then we choose our files, a new window will open, 
and we can then select the project application files which we've then downloaded and click send. So I'm going to go ahead and close that now. Now the project application will be imported and we will have a choice of providing a new name to this project. Now you may receive an error message during the process, don't worry about it. It's not really too important because it's uh, because, of, uh, because of the database possibly or because of some applications are missing because of a version and so on. So as long as you receive this version, this part of the um, import, you should be okay to continue. Okay, so I've just named it project int underscore two just for the sample and I'm gonna click okay. So now the project applications will be imported into script case as a new project. Okay, so once the import's ready, we can then go ahead and open the project and we are then going to see the applications that are available within the project. So we see we're starting here in a folder which is called Google Maps. If I go to root, we have here also the extra application for the value kilometer. So I'm going to start by generating all of the source code. And then once all the applications are generated, in some cases you may receive errors here if there is issues with the database, for instance. In this case, I, I am actually already using the original database, but as you see, I'm also receiving some error messages here. So let's have a look in a moment what's actually going on. So here, connection attempt failed. Okay, so we still have the applications tied to the original database, and now we're gonna go ahead and look at that. I also have the error message window pop up, which I'm gonna close and ignore. And then now, because now all the applications are tied, so if we come here to database and edit connection, we're gonna see the original database that the connection is using. Okay, so we don't actually have this database. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that, and I'm gonna create a new connection. I'm gonna select MySQL, and the database I have already imported, which we can have a look at in a moment. And if I list databases here, I'll scroll down and I have here the script case underscore webinar. And if I test the connection, we have connection success and I can then save that. Okay, now the fastest way to change all of the applications is to come up here to the tools and express edit. And then from here, I'm gonna select all of the applications and then I'm gonna select connection. Now, in normal cases, I would go next. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna select applications instead and go next. Okay, so when selecting applications, you're gonna see that the groups of applications are always presented. So we have blank applications, grid applications, forms, menus, we have controls and so forth, charts and so on. Okay, so in this case, of course, I'm gonna select all of them because I want all of them. In other cases, you may select individually. We can also go by folder if we wanted to. I'm just gonna go next now. I'm then again gonna select connection and go next. So I can now change the connection. So originally we are at con underscore MySQL and I'm gonna change it now to the one I just created, underscore one. Apply that and regenerate the source code. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And now all of the forms should go ahead and run. So if I run, we now have the value kilometer. And if I enter the Google Maps folder, we have here the Maps application, which is the blank app. We have here the GMAPS menu. So if I run this one, we have the menu above, and we can then navigate throughout the applications. And let's go ahead and just test it out, see if it works, add. And we have a redirection there. We still have the global stored. And this is why we now have a cost from my previous display. And we have the distance and time calculated. Okay, so we now have these applications available within our own version of Scriptcase, and we can now use them within our own applications. So in such cases, we would normally go ahead and investigate the code that we have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's have a look. Now we have here, first of all, an application beta shopping. Now I know this one is a demo demonstration of here the form shopping, so just so you're aware. I'm gonna go ahead and close that one. It's not an important application, so yourself you can also delete it straight away, 
or check it out yourself and see what the differences are. Okay, so we have here first of all the form shipping. Now the form shipping, if I go ahead and run this, the form shipping is the form that allows us to enter the origin and destination addresses. Okay, so we have here some basic fields where we have the origin address, the destination address, and then we have four further fields which are actually hidden, but they are also displayed below here, just we just don't see them. Okay, so then we also have some events here and checking the application. The first event that's happening is we are using the macro sc underscore apl underscore conf. So we're changing the configuration of this application form shipping and we are starting it as new. Okay, and then here on on script init. So we're using the macro sc field display and here we are hiding the free fields which we have here which we no longer see. Okay, and then on before insert, so when the user clicks the button, they start to insert. This is the first event that they would then hit after on validate and on validate success, they come here. And here what's happening is we have three fields. So we check here in the fields again, we have this one for the origin, which is then also the city and state and then here again the address city and state of the destination now these here are combined so we're combining the three fields and giving them one variable and then we're using here a method so here we're calling a method and including these two variables okay so on after insert we have here the macro SC commit trans. So we're committing the transaction and ensuring that the database transaction happens and is secured. We then also have the SC un underscore redirect or redar uh, macro, which allows us then to redirect to the orders grid, which is here. And we are also including a global variable or a, ver a post variable within this, which is then the field ID from this application. So we check here and edit fields again. We can see here that we have ID. Okay, so coming down here to programming, we have, if you remember a moment ago, on before insert, we have here the calculate route uh, macro being used. And if I come down and select this, we can see here the code that is being used. So of course, when we generate, when we create the applications, we can copy this code into our own applications and use it ourselves, or we can use the app, the entire application. It all depends yourself. The cha changing of database or the fields for grids is, is quite simple. So then we can just actually copy these applications, which we'll do shortly. So instead of copying the code, we can actually just go have a quick look for it. So we're getting here, first of all, the API key. Now I know this is actually not needed, so I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out. And here we're using the API distance matrix. And here we have the API key defined. And here the URL, which we are using. Now we have here, first of all, the trip type defined as driving. And we here have some parameters which, are, which we have included within the application. So we're passing then the parameters using the HTTP build query function. And we're defining the variables, a null, and the PHP query RFC 3986. So this then converts this into URL basically. Below that we are then using um, a, new map, a new parameter called response which then indicates the SC web service. And so here we're connecting then and receiving the file contents from the Google URL here, as well as including the parameters which we have here and the port, okay? And we have then also an array which we then receive back. And here we then have the port defined. Okay, so over below that we then have here, if I, sorry, that's not the port, that is the timeout. Below this, we then have the JSON decode. So here we are taking the, um, the variable and decoding it. Now, below that, we then have if the data is available. So if this 
decode is available, then we're going to grab the data and present it within our fields. So here we have the data that is grabbed from using the macro. And here we are replacing or placing that data into our fields. So we have here the distance kilometer, the temple viage, so the speed, which is here. And we also have the presso and trega, uh, which is then the price. Okay. Now we have then the error messages here. So we can see here again, we're using some macros to display an error message and below also, and we're also exiting the application if there is an error message. Okay, so the, the main functions we need to change here is first of all our APIs. So the API, again, we have within our Google application with the APIs enabled. So let's view here our credentials. And then you can simply by clicking here, copy your key and then paste it into the application and reuse it for your own project. Now, continuing on with the other applications, we have here also the GMAPS menu, which is using a basic dark blue theme. And we have here each of the items that is available within the application. We then also have the maps, which is a blank application, which is also used within here, the orders grid. So I'll come back to this one in a moment and return back here to maps. So here in maps, we also have some API keys, which are in use. Now the error message we're seeing previously is because of this line here, we're just missing this. And then we just need to replace the API key here for the Google Maps JavaScript API key. The distance matrix API of course works uh, as shown already. So this will then display a, this should then display a map with the directions a user should travel from origin to destination. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this code here so we can see what's going on. Again, as previous, we have here the type, the API keys defined. And now what we're doing is we are receiving two global variables, the glow orig and glow dest. And these are then defining the longitude and latitude. Okay, below that then we are creating a basic page. So we're using here bootstrap. We have some styling and we have here a button and then we display a Google map. So below that we have a function which then displays a close button and then we have the Google map function. So if you're familiar with Google maps, you can see here that the direction service is being used and also rendered as well as the geocoder and map service, the distance matrix also again. So within this, once it's actually working with your working keys, then you should have no problems actually having a functioning map with um, directions to the location. We below that have another function for the calc route and also another function for the address. So each of these then provide uh, geocoder statuses and directions. Um, below that then we have a for each for the address and the calc route. So we're printing here the, the, um, the location details. And below that then we are preparing another response here to use the SC web service and connect again to the Google Maps service and give us the destination details. Below that here we have the script for the Google Map and we have then another div, which is now displaying then the distance information. So we have here origin, destination, the distance, the speed of voyage. And then we are echoing some error messages if there is a failure there along the line. So in between this, we are using straight APIs from um, services such as Google within Scriptcase, uh, using blank applications, forms, and combining them with the menu, basically. The grid application, which is then the final application here, we have some very basic fields where we have the shipping information, the distance, time, cost, and the route. Now the route is an extra field that has been added. And then in event, we have here, first of all, on script init, 
where we capture the global variable sent from form shipping. And then if it's available, then we, we will use it within the MySQL My selection. And if not, then we're gonna remove it and delete it. Then we have on record. Now here we have, first of all, the field here for the route, and we're displaying the map, map marker icon for the image here. And below that, we are defining here the origin and destination. And again, combining the three fields as previous within the form shipping. And then the final action here is the SC link macro, where we're then linking the orders table or this grid application to here the G maps menu. Oh, sorry, here the maps blank application. Now here we have then the maps application and then we have the variables origin and destination which are being sent over to the to that application we have then a title defined that it is a modal application and then the size of the modal okay so next up we have then the header where we have a little script or uh, for a function to close the iframe well to remove the iframe as well as the window and overlay so this is then from the Google map. And if we come down here to programming, we can see here in PHP methods, we have no methods in use in this grid application. So if I go ahead and run this now, we can see all of the locations that have been entered, as well as the distance, the time, and the cost of each travel destination. Okay, so you might notice a slight difference now from what we had a moment ago in the background. I've gone ahead and updated here the, the image that is displayed and also updated the script being used for here, the map and route. So now within the grid application, we have the distance time displayed. And when I then click here on the map, we will then have a Google map displayed with then directions from the location as well as then the destinations, origin, location, and destination. We can then fully use the map within our application. And as we had seen within the code, we can make various changes to the size of this window and how the data is then displayed. So now when you come to import this application, you will be able to fully use it within your own application without any problems and import it into your project and have everything working beautifully. Okay, so now in most scenarios, as mentioned, we would either copy the code from each of these applications or we would want to reuse them within our own applications. One thing we will do then is we're gonna go ahead and close all of these and let's go ahead and open another project. And what I'll do is then I will open the previous property management project, which is uh, one of the previous webinars I've done. And in this project, I think this is an ideal scenario where we would, we would want to use these applications again. So I'm gonna come in here. And basically what I want to do is I, I'm already working in this project and I want to now copy these applications in here. Now I can't do that from directly this project. I actually do need to open the project from which I want to import the applications from. So again, I need to enter into the maps two, and then from here, I can go all applications, select them all, and then come here, copy. And from here, then I can select the application or the, the project to which I want to replicate these applications to. So here I will then select here the property management version one and go copy. And then I'll go OK. And then those applications will now be copied into my other project. So now if I open the property management project, I will now find a copy of the applications which I have imported. And I can now use them here. So I come here to root. We have here, first of all, the value kilometer and the folder as it was that I had imported with the applications here available to use. So now, again, as previous, what you will want to do is actually change the database of these applications, maybe customize the fields further, and then you'll be able to use them within the new project that you're using. 
So I'm going to go ahead here and make the changes here again. So let's go ahead and run first of all here, here the form kilometer and see if it's going to run. Provide us an error message. What we need to do to actually get this running within this project. So now with the value kilometer running, we're seeing first of all here the theme is missing. We're using a very different theme here. So what I want to do then is I want to come back here to tools, express edit, and I'm going to select applications. And now here I have the form value kilometer. I have then also the grid orders. I'm going to select the blank maps also, and then also the G maps menu and go next. Now here I'm going to select the connection and make sure the connection is selected correctly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable suite alerts, the position, because I have these within the original project. I'm also going to select theme and then I'm going to go next. So then I'll enable suite alert within these applications and I will leave it as top right. The connection, I will leave the mice connection MySQL1, which is the original connection they were using. And then here for the theme, I will change here to the midnight, which is what I have within the current applications. So I'm going to go ahead and apply, and then I can generate those applications. And they will have the new theming applied. Okay, so if I run that, we now see we have the value kilometer and the original form. So I'm going to go ahead and make some changes to this now. So if I open the form and the first thing, let's go ahead and access the settings. And we're going to change this to a width of 600. And select like pixel for the width unit. And then below that, we're going to come here and access the layout and blocks. Let's have a quick look at the form again. Okay, and there what we're going to do is we're going to leave this as no. And change the label position to above. And we can actually add a title in here. So I don't mean to create a new block. We have that stored now. Okay, so now if I go ahead and run that, the value kilometer will now have a header and add the cost per kilometer. And we will now go ahead and change the title of the field. Kilometer of price or cost even. Save that. And I want to also change the toolbar and move the exit button over here to the left. No need for the search. And remove the other buttons over to the right. Okay, so I'll now run that again. The form is a little nicer looking. And we'll we can it's pretty much ready to incorporate into my own project. So then we have then also have the here the Google Maps applications. So as mentioned previously, the beta shipping, we can delete that. So we don't need that. We have here the form shipping, which says it is still outdated. So let's go ahead and run that and see what's happening. Okay, so here the theme was not applied. So let's have a look. We have here layout and then settings. And here we have the theme midnight. Save that. And I can run that now. And the theme is here. Now also applied. I here I also want to make some changes. So I'm gonna come here and open font awesome. And for the shipping, let's go ahead and add a map icon, select free. And let me add then here the route. Copy that. And now here in header and footer, I'm now going to add that in here. Okay, and we 
can run that again. And now that will also have a nice little font awesome icon there. And then we still have these blocks. Now I actually want to stop these from opening and closing because there doesn't seem to be any purpose of that. So let's select no on each of these. So the rest of the application is good. So if I go ahead and run that again, we can then see the form without the open and close containers. And then the next application, which we would then probably use here, would then be the orders. And here again, let's go ahead and run that and see what changes we would make there. Now here, as per usual, I like to first of all make my grids nice and tight. So I'm going to go zero, 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 0, here and save that. And we want to also change here the route icon. So let's come here into events and then on record. Now here we are using the image. And instead of using the image, I'm going to use a font awesome icon. Now I search here again for map. And free. And then here we can use say here the map marker and copy that. And then I'm going to paste that in here and use the font awesome icon instead. Now I need to change the code here slightly. And I also want to increase the size of the font awesome icon. So then if I go ahead and run that now. I now have a new map icon displayed and all the information correct as, as I should have for this project. Now for your own project, of course, you may want to go ahead and make further changes, such as change some of the titles that I used for here, for instance, the modal window. So if I open that, we have there the mobile window open. We still have there the error message. So let's go ahead and clean that one up. Come here to home, open up the maps application. I correct that and generate. We can then refresh the application, press that again, and the map is basically functioning. Just the API keys need to be corrected or changed for your own project. And then what you have is then you'll have the Google map as well as the route directions which you can actually see fully functioning here within the video or the original video that was created by Federico. And there you can also see how the map is then created, the um, route is displayed, as well as the directions for the entire path. So I hope you have enjoyed today's video and learned something new. Until next time, thank you for watching.